Well, hello. Welcome once again to Biblical Answers to Commonly Asked Questions on Water Baptism. Hi, I am Bishop Jerry Hayes, Abbot General of the Disciples of the Way Apostolic. It's such a joy for me to come before you with these lessons on the subject of water baptism. Water baptism has been the rite of passage into the Christian faith. It has been the seal of the covenant for over 2,000 years. And, uh, or I should say, just about 2,000 years. Uh, the day of Pentecost being in AD 30, and uh, we are now in AD 2013. So we are coming up on 2,000 years now that water baptism has been with us. And during that period of time, there have been just many uh, debates over the role that water baptism plays in the Christian gospel. And, uh, of course, this is episode number 13. There have been 12 teaching sessions before this one. So, welcome. And if you're just joining us right now, I want to admonish you to avail yourself to the teachings of the previous 12 episodes. Each episode is between 15 and 30 minutes long. And we try to keep it in that time span so that we will not tax your patience. This is a very important study, and it is a timely one. And I trust that we're going slow enough so that you might be able to keep up with us, but yet fast enough to keep your interest uh, in these studies. We are on question number 56 at this point, and uh, there are... Let me look and see here. We're getting close to the end. Uh, there are 70 questions in this Q&A, and we're on number 56. So we'll go right to this question, number 56, after we go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the holy name of Christ Jesus, and we ask that you will illumine all that is darkness within us and help us through the light of the world see the message that you have in your word concerning this ordinance of your church that you, Heavenly Father, instituted. Amen and amen. We say that Jesus instituted uh, baptism because of Matthew chapter 28 and 19, these are the words of institution where Jesus instructed his disciples to go ye into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is where Jesus instituted water baptism. Now, we have been studying this, and we this is a Q&A, and we have uh, covered 55 questions so far. And uh, today we're going to begin with question number 56. Question number 56 in Biblical Answers to Commonly Asked Questions on Water Baptism is this. How is the cleansing of the blood of Christ and water baptism biblically connected? Well, just a large swath of Christianity will say it's not. But the Bible tells a different story, doesn't it? As we have already seen through the questions that have preceded this one. So let us look in the New Testament and see what the New Testament has to say between the connection between being cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ and water baptism. And this is a real interesting comparison. So first we go to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28. And here Jesus is instituting the Lord's Supper. 
And uh, he is saying about the Lord's Supper when he blesses the wine, he said, this is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for the remission of sins of many. Well, now, I may have paraphrased that just a little bit, but you will acknowledge that that's what that scripture says. Jesus' blood is shed for the remission of our sins. Now, there's a difference in uh, remission of our sins and simply believing or confessing Christ. You know, a person may go out and get very dirty. Let's say a child is playing and they go out and the mother gets them all dressed up to go to town or maybe to church and, and they say, can we go outside? Can we go outside? And mom says, well, you may go outside, but you cannot get dirty because you have on your Sunday go to meeting clothes. Well, the children go outside and being children, they do get muddy and they do get dirty. And they come in and, and uh, mom says, my, you, I told you I would spank you or I would punish you if you went outside and got uh, dirty, got these clothes dirty. Well, little John and little Susie ask forgiveness. They say, I'm sorry, forgive us. We'll not do it again. But you know what? They're not clean, are they? Until they go to the bath and they get washed. Then when they get washed, then they are clean. Many people confess their sins to Christ and suppose that that's all there is to it. You may confess your sins to Christ and you may ask forgiveness. But the sin question in your life is not settled until the blood of Jesus Christ is applied. Many say, well, the blood of Jesus Christ is applied when I ask forgiveness. But the Bible tells another story. We know that the blood of Christ was shed for the remission of our sins. And uh, Ma Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28. But in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, now Jesus said that the, his blood was for the remission of our sins, Matthew 26 and 28. Then in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, when the multitude asked Peter, what must we do? And Peter had just preached the very first gospel message, the very first one. And here we have the first time that alien sinners are asking what they must do to be saved. And we have the very first answer from the chief apostle. He said, repent, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Then he told them why. For the remission of your sins. So here we have a connection, beloved, that uh, the blood of Christ is shed for the remission of our sins. And the apostle tells us that we are baptized in water in the name of Jesus for the remission of our sins. So there is a one-to-one -one correlation here. But not only here, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5, we read concerning the blood of Jesus Christ. Now here, uh, John is introducing to the seven churches uh, Jesus. He is introducing uh, the one that this letter is from. So in verse 5 of chapter 1, he says, And this letter is from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him who loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood. So here, the apostle John tells us that it is the blood of Jesus that washes us from our sins. But you know, in Acts chapter 22, and in verse 16, at the conversion narrative of uh, Saul of Tarshish, who was later to become the Apostle Paul, we have Ananias that had been sent to, to Paul by the Holy Spirit. We have Ananias saying to Paul, and now, Paul, why are you tarrying, the King Jimmy says, or why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, 
calling on the name of the Lord. Well, here we have another connection. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 1 and 5 that I just read that we are washed from our sins in the blood of Jesus. But then in uh, Acts chapter 22 and verse 16, it was a teaching of that first century church that our sins are washed away in water baptism. Now I might pause and say right here, we are making this one-to-one -one connection. Remission of sins by the blood, remission of sins through water baptism. We're washed from our sins by the blood of Jesus. We're washed from our sins by water baptism in his name. And we have given you scriptures that show that each one is true. Well, what is happening here? Well, beloved, this is what is happening. The blood of Jesus Christ and water baptism are connected biblically in that, now listen carefully, in that the work of the blood is seen as accomplished through and by water baptism, biblically. Now let me say that again. The work of the blood is seen as being accomplished through the ordinance of water baptism. That's what this is showing. We know that the blood remits sins. We know that water baptism remits sins. Now, it's not that the blood remits sins and water baptism remits sins. No, you, you can't say the blood remits sins and or water baptism remits sins, either one, because water baptism is the instrument of the means of cleansing, which is the blood. See, one is not exclusive of the other. We cannot say, well, if I'm water baptized, I am saying that the blood of Jesus is to none effect. No, not at all. And people who say that basically are not genuine in their objection. They're just trying to throw up a smoke screen to deceive people. The Bible teaches that the work of the blood is accomplished upon the believer through the rite of water baptism. That's why the Bible says that water baptism remits sins and water baptism remits sins, and the blood remits sins. I'm sorry. The Bible says that the blood remits sins, and water baptism remits sins. And the Bible teaches the blood of Jesus washes us from our sins, and water baptism washes us clean from our sins. Now, but, you know, that would be wonderful and good if we stop right there, but let's not do that. Let's get a couple of more things in here. In Hebrews chapter 9 and in verse 14, we read that water baptism cleanses our conscience. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14 says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot uh, to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Now, let me read it again and take out the parenthetical statement. How much more shall the blood of Christ purge your conscience from dead works? The blood of Jesus purges or cleanses or makes clean our conscience before God. But guess what? In 1 Peter chapter number 3 and verse number 21, we read Peter here talking about water baptism and likening, likening it to the flood of Noah. And he says this in verse 21. Now, let me read verse 20 along with it. Which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. How were they saved, Peter? by water. The subject is water. And then in verse 21, he says, the like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us. How does it save us, Peter? He says, not the cleansing of the filth of the flesh. We're not baptized as are the Jews in order to wash the flesh and to cleanse the flesh. That's what he means here. Christian baptism is not like Jewish baptism where they 
wash, have the ceremonial washings to cleanse their flesh. That's not why we baptize. He says, but we baptize for the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So here we're told that the blood purges, cleanses our conscience. And then we're told that water baptism does the same thing. Why is that? That is true because the work of the blood is accomplished through water baptism. Let's get one more. In Hebrews chapter 10 and in verse uh, 29, we read that the blood of Jesus sanctifies. Now let's read this and listen to it. This is a beautiful passage from the writer of Hebrews. Hebrews 10, 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. How is the person sanctified? Through the blood of the covenant, an unholy thing, and hath done despite to the spirit of grace. He's talking here about one who has uh, denied the blood of Jesus having salvific value after having been saved. And he says that this one is surely in a very bad predicament because he has denied the blood by which he or she was sanctified. So the blood of Jesus sanctifies the believer. But you know, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 26, we're told that water baptism sanctifies the believer. In Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 26, the Bible says that he might sanctify and cleanse it. If you go antecedently back in the chapter, you'll find he's talking about the church that the Lord might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now, this is a very interesting scripture, and we should take probably a whole episode uh, on this one verse. But just let me give you a thumbnail sketch of what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that the church is, sanctif is sanctified at the washing, at the ceremonial washing by the word. Now, <laughs> The word, word here in the Greek is not logos, but it's rhema. And it means the word that is spoken by the living voice. F.F. F. Bruce says concerning this passage that the Apostle Paul is writing about the cleansing, the ceremonial cleansing that one has at the baptismal water. And the cleansing, though, is actually done by the word that is spoken at the ceremonial cleansing of the water. And that word, beloved, that is spoken at the ceremonial cleansing of the water is the name of Jesus. It is that invoked name that washes one clean from sin because it is that invoked name that we're going to see later that actually facilitates the work of the blood of Jesus Christ in behalf of the baptismal candidate. So here we have seen some very enlightening things. In answering the question number 56 of how is the cleansing of the blood of Christ and water baptism biblically connected? Well, in rehearsal, let's, uh, let's go over it once again. The blood of Jesus remits sins, Matthew 26, 28. Water baptism remits sins, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. The blood of Jesus washes from sins, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. Water baptism washes from sins, Acts chapter 22 and verse 16. The blood of Jesus cleanses and the, the conscience, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. Water baptism cleanses the conscience. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. The blood of Jesus sanctifies, Matthew chapter, or Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29. Water baptism 
sanctifies, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26.